to stand in the presence of God. We appreciate him for another opportunity to share together, to pray together. This is a part two of the message, Arise and Shine. And uh, we took our text from Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3, that says, Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all the nations to see. For the glory of the Lord is shining upon you. Darkness as black as night, gross darkness will cover all the nations of the earth. But the glory of the Lord will shine over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. This above prophecies, we've been looking at it for a month. And we've been seeing what God is speaking to us. The thick darkness will cover the people. So we know we have a mission to shine. 
But what are we shining against? What is our opposing force standing against that shining? What are we up against? Brethren, we are up against gross darkness covering the nations. And if you ask, what is darkness? Darkness means absence of light. It means not receiving or reflecting or radiating the light. And we know Jesus Christ is the true light. So when you see us, when we are not receiving it, reflecting or radiating its light, we're walking in darkness. It also means being in obscurity. When we are sitting down in the dungeon of depressions and feeling that life is not going by and not working for the purpose for which we are brought into the earth, like I said yesterday, to subdue the earth, to have dominion, to take charge. When circumstances are governing our lives, when we are depressed and paralyzed, when God created mankind in his own image and he gave them authority and considered his power on earth for man to govern. When we are not doing that, brethren, we are allowing darkness to move. When we are walking in, you know, we are being mysterious, hiding, not easily seen, we are allowing darkness to come in. In other words, darkness is a place where there is no light, a condition of gloom, of ignorance and secrecy. It, it means lack of illumination. God is not able to connect with us. Lack of revelation. The Bible tells us in John, 1 John chapter 1, that God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, we must walk in the light as is in the light. And how do we that do that? We confess our sins. And then the Bible tells us that it will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, we are open, transparent. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are not hiding. We are not doing things in the dark that nobody sees. Praise the Lord. Amen. I have found out that for the church to remove the gross darkness in the church is the first way for us to shine. It's the first way for us to arise and shine. And there's a lot of gross darkness in the church. And that's, we'll pray on some of it this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. In 2 Peter 2, 10 to 15, the Bible tells us and makes us see what the kind of gross darkness we're talking about in the church. It says, but chiefly, 2 Peter 2, 10 to 15, chiefly them that walk after the flesh. The gross darkness is in the church is reflected by those who walk after the flesh. They walk in the lust of uncleanliness. They despise government, they are presumptuous, they are self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring more railing accusations against them before the Lord. But these are natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed. They speak evil of things that they don't understand. They shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. You remember we said what makes people shine is righteousness. Mm -hmm. What these people are doing is what? Unrighteousness. And they call themselves Christians. As they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, there are spots, there are spots in the church, there are blemishes in the church, they are spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they are feasting with us in the church. They are having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Immorality, adultery is one of the signs that you see. They, are, they have bestiality, they can't control their emotions. They are beguiling unstable souls with their eyes, with their demonic powers, they look at unstable people to try and control them. Their heart is exercised in covetous practices. These, the Bible calls, are cursed children. Because they forsake the right way, they went astray. They are following the way of Balaam, the son of Bethel, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. The Bible is talking of these people as part of the church. The spot and the blemish is the ones who are deeming the light of the church. Now, God has called Africa Kyle's movement to call out this true church. Therefore, none of this must be in us. Because the gross darkness in the world is lost. It's greed. It's corruption. The Bible says, love not the world and the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in it. And what is the love of the world? The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. These are things of the world. These are the lust that allows gross darkness to come in. Let me explain it better. If you call yourself a Christian and say, I've given my life to Christ, I want to walk in the image of Christ, the image God created me for, like I said yesterday, the image of dominion, which Jesus Christ came to conform me to that image. As I behold him, I'm changed back to that image from one level of glory to another, and light begins to shine in my life. If you are like that, you are not associated with people at work, 
Maybe they are immoral, you're associating with different people, and you are hearing all sorts of corruption things, all things to do with lust. What is happening is that darkness is beginning to encroach on your light. That's how people get demon possessed. That's how spirit of lust, impurity, and other things possess its people. Why? Because darkness is encroaching to darken their hearts. The Bible talks to say they have heart darkened by iniquity. So when the Bible is saying gross darkness is covering the earth, I think darkness in the minds of the people, of the nations, it actually says. But I will arise on you. We have a duty, brethren, to excuse ourselves from the gross darkness in our generation. We have a choice. You want God's light in your life. You want to be his glory carrier. You want to arise and shine. You want your light to come. You want God's glory, image, character to be manifested in your life. For you to reveal it to your generation, you have to turn your back to gross darkness. There is no two way about it. Because light and darkness cannot stay in the same temple. You have to separate from all ungodliness. Ungodly associations, the things they say. You have to separate from the greed, the corruption, the lust in the world. And another thing this scripture tells us, you know, which I find very interesting, before we pray, 2 Peter 2, 10 to 15, describing those in the church who are spots and blemishes and who are walking in darkness. He says they are self-willed. They despise government with their arts, exercise, and covetousness. In other words, this same spirit are walking in church. Today, I see a lot of churches. We are talking of this new breed that God is calling together in ACM. I see a lot of churches today that okay god has told us forget the old ways praise the lord mm -hmm. i'm doing a new thing new wines in new bottles you don't put old wine and new wine together yes god is telling us that but let, i have news for you like i mentioned yesterday when god called a new generation in joshua they are calling order their discipline their order is much more than even moses generation and their lawlessness mm -hmm. so if anybody feels that the new call is to be self-willed to despise government, a lot of people starting churches, uh, fighting, manifesting flesh, hearts in co covetousness, so many proliferation of churches around. And you think you are in light. Sorry, you are not in the kingdom of light. You are walking in darkness. Because these are the spirits that are walking in darkness. Their hearts are exercised in covetous practices. There are spots and blemishes in the church, dimming the light of the church. Such people fall easily to adultery because the same area of the mental faculty that loves money is the same that, that loves women. They begin to walk in the flesh. They are walking in lusts, uncleanliness, and corruption. And they call themselves Christians. But how you recognize that they hate and despise government and they are self-willed? They can't come into the order of the church. They can't relate with any other person. They can't walk in association with a group. There's no way that they can say, oh, God is our king. He's the governor of all nations. We submit to the fivefold ministry of the church. They can't because they hate and despise government and their self-willed. Let's not spiritualize things, sisters and brothers. I see a lot of people say they carry the anointing. They come around you and you listen to some of the things you are saying, you will see that spirit of, at work that is darkness. Self-willed, despising government, rebellion. These are all witchcraft spirits. There are so many Pentecostal witches today. You need to deliver yourself from it. What we are talking about that the Bible says is dimming the light of the church, spot and blemishes. This is a picture of the world. This is what reigns in the world. Self-desire is on top. No person in the world can be led by the Spirit. No one in the world can genuinely submit to be led by the Word of God, by the governance of the church, because they hate government. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today, I'm praying that your mind will be renewed Amen. to be subject to the laws of God. Amen. God has given us liberty to, and, you know, to obey Him, but expect us to obey Him. He's given us freedom from sins. He has removed all limitations from our life. But that freedom, that liberty is different from lawlessness. Lawlessness should not be in the church. We have to be balanced as Christians. This new breed God is calling must come into God's order and not tolerate disorder in his kingdom. Disorder and rebellion is of darkness. So let's remember to clean out our hearts. What is occupying our hearts as a new breed? How can the image of Christ shine through us to our generation? 
Let us in, remember at the beginning, the world was formless. It was without order. It was in chaos. Before God created light and created order. Part of the work of darkness is disorder, division, and diversion. That's what it did to Adam and Eve in the garden. It diverted them, it divided them, it caused disorder. Part of the work of the devil is lack of government, lawlessness, confusion, no self-control, uncleanliness, making people like natural beasts, believing the first lie, your eyes will be open. You don't need God. You are independent of him. Today, these same spirits are manifesting in our generation. They think darkness covering the minds of the people make their lives come into disorder. So as we form this new army, brethren, as we get ready for this new mandate from God, we must also realize that the old things must pass away. The old wine cannot go in new bottles. Church and religion as we know it must go. You cannot have Pentecostal witches. You cannot have people who... Um, uh, who are polygamists at heart and they come before God, <laughs> praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And all those things are happening in the church because people do not have an understanding that the purpose of God calling us is to shine in his image, mm -hmm. to be transformed mm -hmm. as we behold Jesus and be changed into his same image, in purity, in righteousness, so we can recover back the authority lost by the first man who lost focus on the image of God he was created in. And who lost authority because of that to subdue, to, to, to have dominion and to govern over God's works and creation. So a shift is imminent. But it's our duty to undergird that shift. That's what I'm talking today. It's our duty to understand that yes, God is telling us that things are changing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And there's a change of paradigm. The church is changing as we know it. Amen. God you know, we need to have that understanding, but we must underguide it so that people will not bring in lawlessness into the church of God. People will not bring disorder into the church of God. So it's that balanced outlook I'm bringing before you today. If you are part of the true church, some of these things in the world, remove it. The spirit of lawlessness, lack of governance, you know, not being able to submit to God or submit to his church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the giftings in his church, if you are like that, deal with it today. God will help us in Jesus' Amen. name. So a shift is imminent. A quick glance at history reveals that individuals who will impact their generation and who affected the world dramatically were individuals who, because of circumstances and pressures, challenged the tide of convention. They stretched the boundaries of tradition. They broke the hold of traditions. They violated every expectation of the norms that people thought was normal. For great things have been done, praise the Lord, through them. Because very few great things are done within the confines of tradition and norms. Very few. Very few. When looking at scripture, I see this truth. God is looking for Christians who will break the molds in this generation, in this new army. God is looking for children of God who will break tradition and norms of men that have corrupted the image he has created us in. It, will, it was looking for those who will break into light and follow the path of Jesus Christ. It's looking for those that can become the light to others. It's looking for those who are no longer bound by traditions and, you know, things Satan has used to cover people. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ spoke clearly about this in Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Let's look at it quickly. Matthew 5, 14 to 15. Jesus spoke very clearly about this. And it's, it's, it's beautiful scripture. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but a candlestick and gives light unto all that is in the house. What do you think ACM is, brethren? ACM is a candlestick. God has given us a candlestick or what is called a platform by which several true Christians will be able to put their candle on and that candlestick will make them give light unto all that is in the house, all that is in Africa. That is what ACM is. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we are the light of the world. Where the city is set on the hill, we must arise and shine. The light of Christ, his character, must reflect our generation. Mm -hmm. We must be the lighthouses. We must be recreated in Christ Jesus after his image who has made us. We must behold him regularly and be transformed to his own image. 
We must not allow bushel. What is that bushel? That Jesus said you don't light a candle and hide it under a bushel. The bushels are the world systems. They are the traditions. They are the limitations. They are the molds that mankind has made that's kept men from igniting the light and showcasing the light in their generation. These are the things that stop the manifestation of Christians. These are the things that put obstructions to light shining. The world system erects these religious systems. Oh, uh, a man... Uh, can do this, a woman cannot do this. Praise the Lord. The world system erects these systems. Um, a little child in the church cannot have the anointing. He has to be the old person, as if anointing is by promotion. So there are different norms that the mind creates. The purpose of these norms is to keep the manifestation of Christians bound and stop the light of Christ from shining from those who have ignited. Their political systems are doing the same. Economic, the, all the systems of this world, they're the systems of the devil to keep the light of Christ from shining. And that's why Bible, Jesus said, you cannot light a candle and put it under a bushel. That's why to shine, you are called to a revolution. The bushels must do what? They must go. The bushels that seek to cover the glory of God in Africa must go. Tradition must go. Religion must go. Man's way of doing things must go. God's plans in this last is to use Africa to tear down the systems. Are you with me today? Mm -hmm. When God says, arise and shine, the first model, I mentioned that God is coming yesterday. God is coming for a glorious church, a church without stain or wrinkle, a church walking in the express image and likeness of God. The model God wants to use first is a church in Africa. For the whole world to see what a glorious church looks like. His plan is to use the church in Africa to first tear down all the bushels, all the systems that are hindering the breaking forth of his light from Africa. That's why God said, I have appointed you, he told Jeremiah, I have appointed you over nations, over kingdoms. You will throw down, you will tear down, you will destroy and pull down, then you can build and plant. The first assignment we have as we are preparing the way of the Lord in Africa, like I mentioned yesterday, is to throw down, to pull down, to tear down, and to destroy the molds, the bushels, the embargoes, the limitations that is keeping the light of Christ from shining. And I pray that God will empower us. Amen. I pray God will ignite us. Amen. I pray that we will be mold breaking Christians Amen. who will manifest. Amen. David broke the mold and he danced. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. A king has never danced before in the old town. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's why his wife was laughing at him. He was not politically correct. You know? But he broke the mold. He refused to bow to a hidden king. Praise the Lord. Peter broke the mold. He walked on the waters. Every traditional system or way of doing things that hinders you, God will remove it today in the name of Jesus. Amen. David was the last born in his family. He was not qualified to even be the leader of his father's clan, let alone the leader of Israel. They were calling him a naughty boy and told him to go home. But he was able to lead his tribe and lead the nation because he broke the mold. He defied tradition to say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine coming against the army of the living God? He did that as a teenager. That's how God works. I pray today that every bushel covering our lives, covering our families, covering our children, every veil Satan is putting on their life to hinder the light from shining. Let the fire of God burn it and destroy it today in the name Amen. of Jesus. Jesus. We release ourselves into God's hands. That Lord use us to your glory. Let every bushel of tradition, I do not like to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Let every bushel that is uh, Satan has put against us, let it be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Some of us are, are, are struggling with generational patterns. Look at Joseph. He was almost destroyed. Because he saw a dream that all his elders bowed down to him. This was unthinkable in tradition. The bushel of tradition hindered that light. They wanted to snuff it out. They sent him to prison. He faced opposition from immorality. Different thing. Just to hinder that light from coming forth. But it broke forth. I pray every opposition you are going through, every power that is trying to hinder God's light from breaking forth in your life, from you being a part of the living church in Africa, let those bushels be destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. All family demons, all ancestral demons, all family traditions, all religious traditions that have held men in captivity lose your hold over the people of God yeah. in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. We are breaking the molds. We are breaking the norms. 
The acceptable norms and customs the traditions that suppress our control, that repress potentials and capabilities in Africa. We destroy them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Some people are held bound by the firstborn of their family because they believe that before that person can be allowed to prosper or do well or excel above them, they must be at the same level. There are pharaohs and families in Africa. There are errors in Africa who see destiny and attack it. But today, every pharaoh, every error, Jehovah God will consume them by his fire in Jesus' name. You must shine forth. You must arise and shine. No matter what is standing in limitation to try and hinder that light, no matter what bushel Satan has put over your life and destiny, the fire of God consumes it in Jesus' name. I stand on the authority of God that cannot be broken. I stand as a servant of the living God. I stand on this platform that God has given us, ACM, to liberate Africa. And I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that every demon, every power of hell that is holding you bound, that I will not let your light shine. They, they receive their judgments today in the name of Amen. Jesus. We are going to break forth to shine. God has placed us, He's put us this candlestick because He doesn't want us to be under the bushes so that we can arise and shine, shine light to the old world. You are the light of the world, brethren. <clears throat> so being limited. Where the spirit of the living God is, you are liberty to attain destiny and potential. All things are possible for those who believe. You are a standard bearer for God. You are a city set on the hill that cannot be hid. You must hear God today. You must impart your generation. You must impart your town, your nation in the name of Jesus. Amen. You must hear his voice today and arise to exercise authority and begin to walk in his image. Amen. Every sin that Satan gives, you know why Satan gives sin? Because he knows that when he gave the first sin to Adam, it, Adam lost authority. He knows that walking in the image of God or walking in righteousness is a secret to authority and power with God. And that's why he tempts people with these snares to let them live in sin so that he can keep them captive. So that the strongholds of their family can hold them bound. But today, as you hear the voice of God, you will arise from every cesspit of sin in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will hear the voice of God. You will arise from darkness. Amen. You will ignite the light of God. Amen. And when light ignites, darkness must disappear. Amen. Every area of darkness in your life, it will disappear Amen. today in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you begin to walk in God's image, you will impart your generation. Amen. You'll be a barrier breaker Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You will go forward. Word. Because the cutting of the host of heaven is going ahead of us. Amen. It will break in pieces the gates of brass. Amen. You will cut asunder the bars of iron. Amen. You will give us the riches of new, the riches of hidden places and the wealth of darkness. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. God is raising up a new wine. And he won't put us in old bottles. But he will still keep us in his order. He will still keep us in unity. You still keep us not breaking ranks. You still keep us with our hearts submitted to Him and His kingdom. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I pray that you begin to walk in that today in Jesus' name. As a new wine, you begin to drink from the river of God in Jesus' name. You see, David understood all this. He understood about gates, generational gates, territorial gates, ancient gates. That's why I say, lift up your head, oh ye gates. There are some of you that your destiny has engated even for your father's house. Many people are existing in life. They are not living. They are not attaining potential. They run one, ten steps, and are pulled back by this demonic spirit, 20 steps back. Because of these gates, limitations, barriers erected against their progress in life. Today I pray that the light of Christ is ignited in you. As you choose Jesus, the Bible says, those who sit in darkness, a great light has shown. And what did that great light do? It liberated them from the scourges of the devil. It liberated them from the captivities of the devil. As you allow the light of Christ to flood your heart, to flush out every darkness today, I am praying in the name that is above every other name. That every gate and authority of hell that has held you bound, their power is broken in the name of Amen. Jesus. You are set at liberty. Jesus said, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears me and they open the door, I will go in and I will sup with them. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart this morning. 
Are you hearing him? Are you hearing him? Are you opening the door to him? Are you saying, Lord, flush out the darkness in my life? You are the light of the world. Lord, come into my life. When you say, whosoever walks in with you will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Mm -hmm. Are you telling him, give me the light of life? Flush out darkness on my heart. Take over. Take over, Lord. I don't want to be outsidely okay, but inwardly wicked. I don't want to be outside okay and inwardly filled with darkness. Flush out darkness from my life. In you is life. This life is a light of me. Let this light come unto me today. Amen. And let every darkness in me disappear. Amen. You need to make that prayer. You need to make that prayer so the world system does no longer control you. The loss of the world no longer control you. The Bible says we are partakers of God's divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. When lust loses its power over your life, your light will ignite. So you are going to you are going to begin to tell the Lord that Lord, Lord, I pray with my brethren today. That Lord, every darkness in the world that is operating through lust, let it lose its hold over them in the name of Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Those who follow him never stumble in darkness again, but they have the light of life guiding them. Father, Lord, I pray that Jesus Christ will come in unto my brethren. Lord, you are knocking at the door of hearts today. Let hearts be opened unto you. Those who even claim they've been Christians for many years, but they're still walking in darkness. Lord, restore them today. By this word, restore them. Let there be restoration. Let people give a genuine salvation, Lord Almighty. Let them allow the light of this world to come into their lives. And let us begin to follow you. So we no longer stumble in darkness, but we have the light of life guiding us. Jehovah, Lord, we pray today that, Lord, you will help us, O oh God. As Romans 13, 12 says, that since the night is nearly over, and the day is almost here. We will put aside the deeds of darkness and we'll put on an armor of light. Father, give us the grace to begin to shine as the light of this dark world. You told us we are the light of the world. We are the certainty on the hills that cannot be hid. You say you do not light us and put us in a bushel, but you light us, Lord Almighty, and you put us a, on a candlestick so that all in the house may see us. Father, Lord, make ACM your candlestick in Africa that all will see us, Lord Almighty, from that candlestick and let every bushel, every bushel of tradition, of religion, of, of systems of men, let it be destroyed. It will no longer hold us bound in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Still praying. When God said, Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all the nations to see. For the glory of God is shining on you. Darkness as black as night will cover the nations of the earth. The glory of God will shine over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. The moment you take the character of Christ, the glory of God begins to shine over us. You won't know why. People will just be submitting to you. People will just be coming to you and say, we know that God is with you. Mighty kings will see your radiance. That's what happens when we arise, when we shine, when we begin to go back to that image, like I said yesterday. And we begin to radiate that image and reveal the glory of God in our generation. And behold Christ and change from one level to another into his image. And go back to that image of Adam to subdue the earth, to have dominion, to take charge over God's work of creation. The main reason God created mankind. Let us make man in our own image. And let them subdue the earth. Have dominion over the earth. And rule over that is our mandate, the three, for where we are created. If you're a Christian, you are not ruling over. There's a problem. That's why it says in Revelation 5.10, that he has made us kings and priests. For he calls us from every nation, tongue and kindred. That's what Jesus did. He makes us kings and priests, once we are changed into his image, that we may reign on earth. So this scripture, Isaiah 60, is telling us the picture of a church, a glorious church, reigning on earth. All nations will come to your light. Mm -hmm. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Mm -hmm. It's time to arise, brethren, for the nations to see our light. We are going to pray today that Lord help us to recognize who we are. That we are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. The main challenge we don't recognize who we are. Lord, today help us to realize who we are. We are not darkness, we are light. <clears throat> we are the light of this world. If darkness will not take over this generation, we must shine. 
If darkness will not take over Africa, we must shine. We must purge out all the religious, traditional darkness from generation to generation. We must purge ourselves of all the attitudes that are learned, that are inherited, that have become strongholds. We must purge ourselves of every behavior that is not of God. Many African countries, you know, they have problem of immorality because of the system of polygamy. Many have competition of women always hating each other and fighting each other because of polygamy and what he has uh, sold. We pray today. Let us recognize we are no longer darkness. The darkness that our ancestors walked in that kept them limited, separate us from it, Lord. We are the light of this world. We are the light, we are the reflection of God. We are the, re the revealers of the glory of God. We are not to blend with the dark world. We are to maintain our light. We are to stand out. No matter the opposition, light always shines in darkness and conquers darkness. Lord, let us not dim our light. Let the light of the church no longer be dim. Let us walk out of everything that is of darkness. Lord, let us be your peculiar people. No matter the gross darkness covering the earth, the gross darkness like night covering the nations, let the glory of God shine upon us. Let all nations come to our light. Let mighty kings come to our radiant energy called the glory of God. Lord, in this generation, we can see the gross darkness is now. And we know we are less concerned about the gross darkness. Because God, darkness can only thrive <laughs> if there's an absence of light. If people are not shining, that's only when darkness. If one person shines in a family, darkness disappears. If one person shines in a nation and shines properly, <laughs> And make the impact. Darkness is up here. The continent, the same thing. Darkness is only absent of light. So we are going to pray today that Lord, make us your light. And as we come out from now, let darkness begin to disappear. Starting from our families, to our clans, to our own lives, let darkness disappear. Let every area of darkness disappear. As the light of God comes upon us, as we arise as a people to begin to shine, let darkness disappear. Let your glory shine on us. Let us be the set city on the hill that will bring light to all in the house in Africa. Without us shining, O oh Lord Almighty, darkness has been occupying. But today we arise to shine. We are right to shine the image of God. We are right to shine the glory of God. We are right to shine the authority, the dominion of God. We are right to shine the authority to subdue, Lord Almighty, to rule over circumstances. We are right, Lord, to arrest what you are arrest. We are right to bind demons of hell. We are right to lose the spirit of the living God. We are right to lose those who are bound in captivity. We are right to release those who are in the dungeon of darkness. We are right to dispel the darkness in our continent. The darkness of hatred, the darkness of bitterness, the darkness of rituals, the darkness of witchcraft, the darkness of enchantment, we arise and shine the light of Christ and we command darkness to disappear over Africa in Jesus. Amen. Let all nations come to our light. Amen. Let mighty kings come to our radiance. Glorify your holy name in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A few more prayer points for this session. We are also going to pray to manifest as light from now. When light is manifesting, one of the things that happens is that you see illumination or what is called solution. Are you listening? There's revelation. There's unction. When light is shining, we bring solution to the world. All over the ages, go and look at those who made inventions in this world. And you see the plan of God for his church. From Einstein and all of them, most of them were Christians. I learned that Rockefeller, he was a deacon in his church. Many of these people, they knew God and had contact with God. The Israelis, majority of the inventions they are bringing, that is time hundred of any other person, it is because of their connection with God. Because God illumines his people. God gives revelation. We're going to pray that Lord as we have made us the light of the world, make us a solution to the problems of the world. Let Africans become the solutions. Give us illumination to the darkness in the world. Through our presence in our families, let darkness disappear. In our offices, in our neighbors, neighborhoods, let darkness disappear. Make us the solution builders. Lord Almighty, all the children, the youth that are dying in obscurity in Africa, give us the solution to bring them out of the dungeon of darkness. 
all the marriages that are in torment in Africa, give us a solution to bring them out of the torment and prisoners of darkness. Lord Almighty, all the things that are happening in Africa all over, Jehovah Lord, economically, give us a solution. Open our eyes, begin to give us illumination. Every member of this year, let's begin to dream dreams. Let's begin to see visions. Let's begin to hear God. Let's begin to have mighty revelations. You have called us a, to prepare a glorious church. A church without wrinkle and stain for you. Give us a revelation to lead that church. Let your church begin to ignite. Let provisions begin to come. Let wealth begin to come. You desire that we will prosper and be in good health and our soul will prosper. Jehovah Lord, let us begin to shine your light. Lord Almighty, in health, let's begin to shine your light. Let the health of the people in Africa begin to burst forth. All the things that are causing sickness and afflictions, imported by the enemy, all the trials of medicine that cause all sorts of diseases, Father, let it come to an end. Give us solution for the health of Africans. Give us solution for the prosperity of Africans. Give us solution for direction of Africans. Give us solution for the children and the youth of Africans. Jehovah, raise up leaders amongst us, Lord Almighty. Make us the illuminators of the darkness in Africa. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. That's what we're going to pray. You're going to pray for yourself that, Lord, give me a life of dominion for your glory. Let all things come under my feet as you promised Adam. Let the work of your creation begin to obey me and favor me. Let me begin to walk in the image you have created me. Let the glory and dominion you gave mankind before the fall of mankind begin to manifest in my life, family, and church. Because Jesus has returned it back to us. The more we behold him, we are changed to his image. We are changed to the original image you created us in. Lord Almighty, transform my life. Return this dominion. Return this authority that you have given your true church in the name of Jesus. Help us to be fruitful. Help us to multiply. Help us to replenish the earth. Help us to subdue it. Help us to have dominion over all the work of your creations. Lord, do it to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray. That's what going to pray that Lord today <clears throat> give me the anointing to take your kingdom by force. When you arise, praise the Lord, you shine. But you know what you are up against? Ghost darkness covering the earth. I praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. In fact, the moment to <laughs> the moment you begin to shine, there's um there's a particular um what did they call it? There's a particular insect in Africa. It's attracted to light. Once light is turned on, those insects gather. What do you think they are trying to do? To dim the light. Mm -hmm. So you need to have an understanding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We need to take the kingdom by force. We are going to pray today. Matthew eleven twelve says, And from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. Only the violent take it by force. You are going to declare that I will shine whether the devil likes it or not. <laughs> Every opposition to my shining, I come against you today. Every power that's uncovering my life, my home, my children with darkness, I come against you by the blood of Jesus. Lose your hold over my life. I enter into a period of kingdom rest, kingdom provisions, power here on earth, dominion to govern my circumstances. Because today I arise to begin to shine. I arise to take responsibility in the name of Jesus. Ah, I arise to be connected with the kingdom of Christ forcefully today in the name of Jesus. I arise, oh Lord, to press in. That woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in through the crowd until she pulled the hem of his garment. We press in, no matter the crowd, no matter the noise, no matter the opposition, we pressed in today in the name of Jesus to begin, oh God, to connect with our Lord and to begin to walk in his image. Every temptation on the way, all the hindrances on the way, all the oppositions on the way, all assigned friends and associates who want to cover us with darkness. Father, let your fire separate us from them today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We are still going to pray on that. To press him forcefully. To possess a kingdom forcefully. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. That's why the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, not loving their life unto death. You know why? You won't die. I can't tell you your amen. amen. You won't die in Jesus' amen. name. But Satan will bring things to, you see, the moment, if you, if I tell you what the enemy did when we started praying, you understand? You see some of the ministers coming in to say different things. Some of their children were rushed to the hospital. Some of the, all sorts of things. 
I'm talking of not one, two, I'm talking of, of maybe about 20 cases when we started praying. But we were not moved because we know we can only overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, not loving our life today. Because Satan wants to threaten. He will try and bring false evidence appearing real. The first day um, somebody prayed, that day, so he prayed against COVID. That night, as someone was rushed to the hospital for COVID. Different things were happening. But do you know, every one of it led to what? To praise. Because the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God has delivered us from them oh. all. When you are fighting the battles of God, when you are advancing the kingdom of light, Satan can never conquer you or touch you, overcome you with. Mm. He tries. But it's your own duty to say, no matter what I am saying, I reject it. Mm. It's not my portion. You understand? For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. We are under the kingdom of light. You are the one who begins to declare your body. You know, the person called me and said she was ill. I said, you can't be ill. Because the Bible says your body is a temple of God. Your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. It's impossible for the Holy Spirit to stay with sickness. Therefore, all you need to say, every stranger that is trying to occupy this body, by the power in the name of Jesus, I say you must live in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Every tree my Father and my God has not planted must be rooted out mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every stranger must be frightened out. Mm -hmm. So that is what we need to do, brethren. These are all false evidence appearing real to try and hinder people. And if you allow that, many people, Satan has buried their destinies that way. Bury their family, bury their children because they follow his fear and torment. But today we arise and we say the kingdom of God suffering violence. We take it by force. You're going to begin to pray and say, Lord, every attempt for, of darkness to come against me, to hinder me from shining, by the power in the name of Jesus, I destroy it. It will no longer prosper. It will no longer prosper. People have stood up, oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refuse to bow to Satan's agents. <laughs> they refuse to bow to his intimidation. They declared <laughs> that they will not compromise. Joseph had to refuse compromise with Potiphar's wife and sin against God. So his destiny is not cautioned. No, I had to stand against the sin in his generation and believe God that God has called people to righteousness, even though everybody else did not believe. <laughs> Jeremiah had to cry out to an unrepentant people who rejected his message and opposed him and were ready to destroy him. He had to be shouting and saying, God is the one. He had to be weeping, in fact. Paul had to bear persecution on account of his faith for God. Rama Sekayaba, very many testimonies of his being beaten. But today, God will arise for us. Amen. Paul and Silas were preaching. Satan sent them into the prison. But in the prison, what were they doing? They were singing and dancing and praising the Lord. And the Holy Ghost came down and they were like, written. Every prison house of darkness in your life, in your children's life, in your family, that Satan has caged you on account of the light of God, on account of the plans of God for your life, we command that prison house to open in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let that be a release today in Jesus. Jesus. You have to be radical in faith. That's what it means that the kingdom of God suffering violence. Only the violent take it by force. You have to be radical against every midnight situation. Every plan of Satan to cover your mind, to cover your life, your family. You must not lose hope. You must not blame God. You must continue singing and praising God. And God will release himself and release his power to liberate you. Today the Lord will liberate us in Jesus. So let's begin to appreciate God. We will finish this, um, the prayers by 3 p.m. by God's grace. But our time is gone now. So let's begin to just thank God and appreciate him for what he has done in this session. That Lord, we take your kingdom by force. We are the light of the world. We believe it. We receive it. Lord, we believe you are lifting us up in the realm of the spirit above the storms and turbulence of life. We believe, oh Lord, that we have overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We believe you, oh Lord Almighty, that your dominion, your glory, your authority is given unto us to govern our situations. We believe you that we will arise in the the name of Jesus. We believe you that Lord, it's our time for our light to shine. We believe you that you continue to defeat the enemy on every side concerning us and our families. We believe you Lord Almighty that the night is over and the day is here. We believe you that we are putting aside the deeds of darkness and we are putting on the armor of light. Lord, we believe you. 
Be glorified. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Oh, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining.